everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Back Row Yoga YouTube channel. For your practice today, you're going to need one blanket. You'll need two blocks and a strap. Once you have all of that, you're gonna take a seat on your mat. If you need some support for your sit bones, you can sit onto a blanket. And of course, if you don't need the support, you can just set your blanket off to the side. Now we're gonna lengthen the legs out long. As you lengthen the legs out long, you wanna find that the legs are lengthened out equally here. I'll scoot back a little so you can see me a bit. And you're gonna come into staff pose. In your staff pose, you're gonna place your hands down by your sides. Pose is also known as Dandasana. Now lift the sternum up, press the sits bones, and lengthen out through the hamstrings. Now point the left toes forward. Can you feel the muscles in and around the knee activate? And then place a flex to the left foot. Point the right toes. Feel the muscles activate in and around the knee. And then flex the right foot. Cross your legs at the middle of the shins. Get yourself nice and comfortable here. Remember, if you want that support, I always love to sit on some support myself. And as you get yourself nice and settled here in easy seated pose, let your eyes softly close as you walk your feet underneath the knees. You can always move the fleshy part of the buttocks out from underneath. That'll help to lift the sternum a little higher. Let the eyes softly close as you begin to tune into the breath. Breathing in through the nose and softly blow the air out of the lips. Continue with this breath process. This is a really beautiful way to cleanse the mind of all the thoughts that the mind is holding on to. And allow your focus to be so present here with the breath. Breathing in. And softly blow the air out of the lips. Notice your physical body settling here into your practice. As you soften the muscles in the face by relaxing through the space between the eyebrows. Soften the skin across the forehead. Sense all the muscles of the skull as they gently release, including the space behind the backs of the ears. Let your tongue just softly rest at the base of the mouth as you return to a breath, even breath in through the nose and an even breath out of the nose. Feel the rise and fall of the chest as you relax through the throat and the neck. Collarbones are broad, shoulders release away from the ears. And feel the hips as they gently broaden the base of the pelvis and the buttocks press into the support beneath you. The knees press away from the body. Today we'll be focusing on building strength and mobility in the muscles that support the knee. Take your left hand and place it over the heart and the right hand onto the belly. As you gently draw your chin into your chest, feel the weight of the hands on the body. As a reminder to hold yourself here in this space, the space of our practice, be aware of your drishti. Our drishti is that inner gaze. Studying the self, Ishvari Pranidhana. And becoming so totally and completely aware of sensation. Making sure that no pain is present, just awareness. Stepping out when we need to step out of a pose or going a little deeper when we feel that we want to explore a little more in our practice when it doesn't cause pain. 
sense the weight of the hands as a reminder to hold yourself in a place of healing energy. Practicing only what is nurturing and authentic for you and your practice today. Let us take a moment to set an intention for our practice. Let that intention be breathed into the body. As you feel that intention, breathe it into your body. Let's gently sigh it out by gently blowing it out of the way. Two more rounds. Breathe that intention in. And exhale to softly blow it out. Inhale again to breathe it in. Exhale to blow it out. Very gently lower down onto your back. If you need a blanket under your head, offer yourself that support of a blanket. Make sure that you have a strap and a block close by. And as you lower down, draw your knees into your chest. We want to make sure that the chin can rest comfortably above the chest. Shoulders are free of the blanket. If it feels nice, take a little rock side to side here as you softly close the eyes. As we create this little massage for the back, this helps to stimulate our deep core breathing muscles and to prepare the body for our practice. Now lower the feet down to the mat and take the arms and open them out wide, backs of the hands onto the floor. We'll keep the feet close together. Release the knees to the left or windshield wipers. Let the head gently turn to the right. If that feels like it's uncomfortable for you, step your feet a little wider apart. Inhale, come on back to center. Exhale to the second side. We'll keep going at the pace of the breath. Easy, gentle, smooth transitions. Notice the muscles in the feet. Invite them to stay soft and supple. Come on back to center, draw the knees back into the chest, let the big toes touch, hands to the kneecaps, wide knee circles. Now as you can feel, our knees are pretty small in comparison to the rest of our body. There's a lot of muscles that support the knee, and a lot of these muscles are big muscles. Our quad muscles, our gluteal muscles, all of our leg muscles hip muscles, reverse the direction. Anything we do with the legs and the hips are going to be beneficial for the knees. This is a really wonderful way to release synovial fluid through the hip flexors. I made a funny joke this morning when I was teaching. I said, this is like coffee for the hip flexors. <laughs> it's like our body's own way of lubricating our joints. Extend the legs and extend the arms up toward the sky. Make dumbbell fists with your hands. Roll out the wrist and roll out the ankles. If that doesn't feel comfortable for your hamstrings, you can always keep the knees bent if that feels better for you. Reverse the direction. And then draw the knees back into the chest, lower the feet down. This time, step them out as wide as the mat is. Take the arms and open them out wide. Release the knees over to the left for wide knee windshield wipers as the head gently turns to the right. Come on back to center with the knees on the head. Release the knees to the right. Head goes to the left. 
keep going at the pace of your breath. A very easy, gentle release. Sense how the muscles in the legs are gently releasing the knees. Eyes can keep a soft, gentle gaze or they can stay closed. And the next time the knees release to the left, let them stay to the left. Left knee is our anchor, right knee drops down. If you need support for the right knee, you can always take your block. You can always tuck your block underneath the knee. You can walk your foot a little further away from the left. You can still keep the block underneath the knee for support. If you don't need the block, one of the nice things you can do here in this practice is you can cross left ankle over right thigh. If that feels comfortable, stay here. The block can be underneath the knee for support as well. Take a breath in with the head at center. Softly sit the tongue out and down. Soft lion's breath as you turn the head to the right. Take three more rounds of breath, notice and observe. You can feel that beautiful sense of space across the belly, through the right side of the body, all the way up to the fingertips. After that third exhale and cross left ankle, if you've crossed it, come on back to center with the knees and the head. Draw the right knee into the chest, half wide made circle. Reverse the direction. Extend the right leg out toward the sky, clasp the hands behind the back of the thigh. If this feels uncomfortable, you can always use your strap behind the thigh. Point the toes on the inhale and flex the foot on the exhale. And inhale to point, exhale to flex, very similar to what we did in Dandasana, except for we have the support of the spine on the earth, making it a little bit easier to find mobility in these muscles. Across the right ankle over the left thigh, pull the legs into the chest for reclined pigeon pose, clasping hands or strap behind back of left thigh. For those of you that this might feel uncomfortable, you can always place a block underneath the left foot. I'm gonna demo what that looks like. This is a more restorative version of figure four. And if you are suffering from some pain in the knees, it's a really nice way to get this beautiful stretch without overstretching the body. And we'll be practicing a lot of these active awarenesses in our practice today to create this awareness of sensation to build strength and mobility in the muscles that surround the knee. If it feels nice for you, take a little rock side to side to massage the back. Come on back to center and we'll grab onto our strap. And you're gonna place the strap around that inside edge of the right heel for Supta Padangustasana. Extend the right leg up toward the sky. Now this is another one of those active postures that helps us to prepare for our standing poses. If your knee is feeling sensitive here, a few things you can do as you outstretch the arms, you can always lengthen the leg a little bit away from your body and that'll take some of the pressure out of the knee and out of the hip. If you need more support and the hamstrings might feel uncomfortable, place a little bend into your knee. For those of you that want to go a little deeper, extend out through the left leg, press out through the heel as you press out through the right heel. Spread out through the toes, relax the collarbone. 
then observe what muscles are activating the knee. Can you sense the energy of your breath moving from the pelvis to the belly, the ribs, and to the chest? on each inhale and the reverse on each exhale. Now remove the strap from the right foot, float the right leg long, bend into the left knee, and place the left foot onto the mat. And we're gonna work a little bit here to activate more of the knee muscles. Place the palms down by the sides. When you inhale, lift the right knee, right leg, Keep a gentle point to the right toes and let the leg lift about six inches so that you can feel that there's activation and that we're using the muscles. Exhale to slowly lower the leg down and then completely relax all the muscles. Inhale again to gently lift. This is a somatic exercise that targets specific muscle groups. Exhale to slowly lower it down and completely relax. One last round, lift the leg up, notice and observe everything that's working. And then exhale, let it go and let it all soften. Beautiful, lengthen through the left leg. Now bend into the right knee and come into a reclined tree pose. You can let the sole of the right foot press into the left thigh. Press out through the left heel as if you were standing like a tree. And then bring your right hand to the inside of your thigh. And we're gonna smooth out the muscle. Let the muscle just smooth and lengthen. You can do that a few times. If you need support underneath the right thigh, you can always tuck a blanket under there, a block, or maybe even your rolled up strap. And then after you've done that a few times and you can feel that the muscles are activated but not holding on to tension. Let the arms lengthen out behind you if that feels comfortable in your shoulders. If not, you'll place a bend into the elbows and you can create goalpost arms. Backs of the hands will rest to the floor. If that's not accessible to you, take the hands out a little wider. Take a sipping breath in. As you feel the energy rise to the crown of the head, softly clench the teeth, let the air go through the clenched teeth to make an S exhale. Notice where you can soften. One more round, sip the breath in. S exhale, let it all go. Place the right foot back onto the mat. Draw the left knee into the chest. Half wide knee circles. Reverse the direction. And then lower the left foot down. Step the feet out as wide as the mat is. Send the arms out wide, palms to face the sky. Feel the collarbones broaden. Release the knees to the right, head goes to the left, wide kneed windshield wipers. Come on back to center, second side. This is a really nice way to invite the body to let go of tension and tightness. To find a sense of softness and really connecting to the internal divine. Something that can be quite challenging to do, especially when there's so much happening in our world. And maybe all these happenings can cause you some anxiety, some excess tension. And this is just a really nice place to find that gentle release. The next time the knees drop to the right, let the right knee be your anchor. Remember, you can use a block under left knee if you need that support. You can walk the left foot away from the right, just make sure the knee hasn't gone past the hip. Maybe this is where you stay 
or you want to cross right ankle over left thigh. Let your head gently turn to the right as you release with a soft lion's breath, tongue goes out and down. Take three more rounds of breath here. Breathe, expand, explore. Exhale, release, soften. Two more rounds. And cross the right ankle as you come back to center. Draw the left knee into the chest. And cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Transition into a reclined pigeon pose. Draw the legs into the chest by clasping hands behind the thigh. Or maybe a strap. Or maybe your block. This is your practice. And this is where you get to learn what do you like the most. Maybe one side you can go deeper than the other. Maybe the hands can clasp over the front of the right shin. Relax the collarbones, the shoulders. Keep a flex to the left foot to protect the knee joint. If it feels nice, take a little rock side to side. Now I know we're being very gentle and really relaxing right now. But I do promise you we will do a little bit of strength training when we come to standing. And then we will do a little more strength training when we come back down to the back toward the end of class. Now lower the right foot down, extend the left leg up to the sky, clasp the hands behind the thigh. Remember, if it feels uncomfortable, if you pull it too close, let it gently lean out in front of you a little bit away from the body. Point the toes and flex the foot, point the toes, and flex the foot. Take one more round, and then draw the knee into the chest, grab onto your strap for Supta Padangustasana. As we create this activation of the muscles that support the knee, extending out through the leg, feeling your hamstrings engage and activate, Remember, if you have any pinching sensation in the hip, let the leg float a little bit away from the body. If you want to keep right knee bent, please feel free to do so or extend out through the right leg. Where can you find the awareness of how you can soften while still being aware of sensation, the muscles of the legs? softening muscles in the face and being totally and completely emerged within the practice of the inner divine. Breathing gently in and breathing gently out. Now we'll release the strap from the left foot, float the left leg long to the mat. We'll bend the right knee, place the right foot onto the mat, and we'll do that wonderful somatic exercise. Take the palms down by the sides, palms will be flat. You want to feel that your right heel is pressing into the earth, that there's activation in these leg muscles. And when you inhale, we gently lift the left leg, point the toes, feel the activation, notice what's working. You might even feel your core muscles are working. They are part of the knees as well. Exhale, slowly lower down and relax. Inhale again to lift. Notice what's activating, what's working. Exhale, lower down to relax. We'll take one last round, let it lift. Notice and observe. Exhale, gently release, soften. Right leg goes long, left knee bends, reclined tree pose. Slowly release your left foot into the right leg, press out through the right heel as if you were standing. Let the arms lift up to the sky, 
Breathe into all that space we're creating along the side body. You want to bend your elbows, offer that. You soften and knit the ribs to the hips. Let your eyes close and just observe. Where is their activation? Where is their softening of sensation? It is true, we can be active and soft at the same time. One more round of breath. Place the left foot onto the mat. Place the right foot onto the mat. Roll your body over to your right hand side to come into a fetal position. And then use your hands to gently press yourself up. Now we'll come into a, a really interesting posture called Z pose. You're gonna bend your right knee and have your right shin come across the front of the mat. Marry the right toes with the left knee and then we'll turn our body to the diagonal to the right. Place the fingertips to the mat. Take an inhale to lift up out of the crown of the head. Exhale, draw the chin into the chest, round through the spine, and then lengthen out over that right leg. Inhale to lift up, just as if you were a beautiful dolphin diving into the ocean, and then lifting and coming up out of the ocean, rounding down and diving. Inhale to lift up. Take one more round and then bring it back on up and place the right hand off to the side. You can always use a block under the right hand. Left hand onto the hip, lift the hip up and try to bring the left hip over toward the right knee. Release the buttocks back and down without any force. You can feel what's going on in these muscles to the knee. Inhale again to lift it up, bring it across. Exhale to lower it back and down. One more round, lift it on up. And then lower it back and down. Now keep your right hand where it is. Take your left arm, swing it across the body. We're in a nice little twist here. Now you do want the left buttocks to lift up. And we're gonna stay here. And you're gonna, you will be feeling this nice gentle twisting action here. And this is ringing out through digestive organs creating a really nice activation for the left groin, the inner thigh muscles. Relax to the left buttocks. Turn the head to look over the left shoulder. Bring the head back to center. Turn to look over the right shoulder. Come on back to center. Gently unwind. Same thing, second side. Left shin is across the front of the mat. Right knee is married with the left toes. We turn our body to the diagonal to the left. Walk the hands to either side of the leg. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to round down. Dolphin dives. Inhale again, draw it up. Exhale, lower down, soften. Three more rounds at the pace of your breath. After that last round, left hand can set off to the side. If you've got a blanket close by and you need extra support, you can always place the hand onto a blanket like I'm demoing. Remember, you can always use a strap too as well. Now take that right hip, lift it up and bring it over, and then exhale and bring it back down. Inhale again to bring it up and bring it back down. One more time to bring it up and over and then release it down. Now we'll keep the left hand where it is, take the right arm, bring it across the body so that we're in that nice little twist. The right buttocks is gonna lift. You can feel this beautiful line of energy from the right groin all the way to the left hip. Keep the crown nice and lifted. Let your head gently turn to look over the left, the right shoulder. Come on back to center, look over left shoulder. 
and then bring it back to center and come on back to a seated pose. You'll cross your legs. Now cross your legs in a non-dominant way, the way that feels a little funky. And then get yourself so that you're nice and situated here. Inhale to lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. Inhale again, lift the arms up. Exhale, hands into heart. Inhale again, lift and let the arms rise. Exhale, hands into heart center. Take your left hand and bring it behind you. Lift your right arm up and bring it all the way across the body. Flip the palm to face toward the sky. Excuse me, toward the, the uh, left wall as you come into a twist. Try to square the chest over to the left. Relax the shoulders down. Gently unwind. Lift the arms up toward the sky. Hands come into heart center, second side. Right hand comes behind, left arm lifts up. And as we twist, we're taking these muscles from the belly here and we're drawing them across as the hips stay nice and square. Palm is going to face toward that right wall as you gently twist to the right. Relax at the collarbone. Let the knees press away from the body. So you feel that this is creating space along the sides of the body from the hips. From one side to the other side. And then gently unwind. Meet me in a tabletop pose. As you come onto the hands and the knees, if this feels uncomfortable for your knees, you can always grab onto your blanket for support. I'm gonna demo what that looks like. Now, once you've got yourself nice and supported here, I'm gonna round to the spine for a cat pose as you exhale. Chin into the chest, pubic bone draws into the belly button. Inhale, let the tailbone lift, let the crown lift. Try to reach the crown to the tail and the tail to the crown. Round through the spine, let the pubic bone do all the movement. Keep going at the pace of the breath. This is some more activation for the muscles that support the knee. The shoulders, the sides of the body, the hips, the pelvis, the back. If you have a down dog in your practice, walk your hands about two or three inches out in front of you. If you have a blanket under your knee, set it off to the side. Hips up to the sky, come into a down dog. If you're skipping down dog today, you can come into Uttanasana forward fold or stay in a tabletop or press back to child's pose. If child's pose hurts your knees, you'll lower onto your back by drawing the legs into the chest. Walk the hands to the kneecaps and draw the big toes to touch. That is a reclined version of child's pose. If you're in down dog, bend through one knee as you straighten one leg, and then alternate as you pedal out through the feet. Let the heels of the hands press into the earth, spread the fingers out wide. Down dog is a really great posture, especially if you have any sensitivity in the knees. Now, as you come to stillness, place a bend into the knees and then look forward. Step one foot to the top of the mat. Remember what foot you've used. It's probably your dominant foot. And then the other foot. Inhale to a flat back. And exhale, down fold. Inhale once again for flat back. And exhale down to fold. Generous bend into the knees. Walk the hands onto the thighs. Press the chest up so that you press the weight into the heels. That takes the weight out of the knees. Lift the arms up toward the sky. Bend the elbows, sigh it out. Pana mudra. Inhale again, lift the arms up. Notice your knees. Make sure they're not hyperextended. Bend the elbows, sigh it out. Pana mudra. Now grab onto a block. I'm gonna turn my mat so that it's sideways. 
because it'll be a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing. We'll be practicing some Trikonasana triangle pose. And you're gonna grab onto your block and you're gonna place the block so that it's over to the right side of the mat, kind of at the front of the mat there. Now, take your feet out nice and wide. And we're gonna turn those right toes to face toward the right side of the room. Now, as we turn the right toes, you're gonna grab your block, maybe bend your knee, give yourself some support, and put the block to the inside of the right ankle. Now, this is a gentle triangle pose. If you have an advanced triangle pose, you can always move the block to the outer edge of the right ankle. Now, what we wanna do before we come into our posture is make sure the heel is in line with the inner arch of the left foot. Left toes are at a 45 degree angle. Take your arms and open them out wide, lift up out of the chest. Now bend into the front knee first. Just notice and observe. You want to feel that there's an activation in the inner thigh. So if this hurts your knee, then don't bend your knee. Keep your leg nice and straight here. Now for those of you that have the knee bent, go ahead and straighten through the front leg. Take the right hand and lean forward. Lower the hand down onto the block if that works for you. If it doesn't, you can lower onto your thigh or your shin. Place your left hand onto your left hip. Now you wanna feel the tailbone is reaching down toward the left heel. So you wanna send that tailbone down there. And we wanna be active in the inner thighs. Let your chest open to the camera and maybe you want to lift your left arm up to the sky. Now you can feel this activation in the muscles that surround the knee. If it feels like too much, remember you can always bend the knee and you don't have to have as wide of a stance. Take one more breath in. Now grab onto your block as you place your left hand onto your left hip. Lift your block up as you come on back up to stand. Now turn that right foot so that it faces forward toward the camera. Second side triangle pose. We'll bend into the left knee and we'll pivot on the toes, externally rotate the hip. Block can be placed to the inside of the ankle. Straighten out through the front leg, open out through the arms. Now if you wanna kind of check in with the knee and see how it feels, you can come into a warrior two just to kind of explore sensation. Take another breath here. If it doesn't hurt, if it hurts, please straighten your leg. Next inhale, straighten through the leg. And then as you exhale, we'll hinge forward. Place the fingers out in front of you, lower your hand onto the block. Now for most of us, the right arm is just gonna follow and, and lift up to the sky. You wanna press evenly into both toes. Feel the tail pointing down toward the right heel. Are you active in the inner thighs? And can you feel the left shoulder blade pressing in toward the sternum and out in front of you? The crown of the head is reaching over there in front of the left toes. One more round of breath. and then come on back up. Place the hands onto the hips. Now turn your feet outward. Let the heels come inward so the toes are pointing to the left and to the right for goddess pose. Place the hands into heart. Let the sternum stay nice and lifted as you bend into the knees. Maybe this is where you get and you say, that's it, I can't do any more. That's fine, that, that's your version of a goddess pose. Maybe you can go a little deeper into your goddess pose. Now some people, this might not work for you, and if that's the case, then you'll choose chair pose. Take one more breath in, and then as you exhale, gently come on back up to stand, be really gentle with the legs, Step the feet in towards each other. Tree pose. We're gonna stand firmly to our right foot. If you have a full variation of tree pose, 
you can go ahead and grab on at the left ankle and draw the heel into the groin. If that isn't accessible for you, you can start here with the heel just above the ankle in variation one or into the calf for variation two. Now for some students, they really enjoy the use of a block. You can have your block on low, medium, or high. I know for me, medium works best. So I'm gonna take my block and place it to the inside of my right foot, and I can set my left foot onto the block, and that gives me a little more support to press firmly into the right foot you can feel that how that helps us to lift up out of the waist. Arms can lift up toward the sky. And can you feel the liberation in the body? So we're actively engaging all those muscles that support the knee. Knit the ribs down, relax your face. And then bring the hands into heart center. That always makes me laugh when I say relax the face because I realize I wasn't smiling. All right, here we go, second side. So find your variation of a tree pose. So I'm just gonna head straight into the one that I like that works the best for me. Remember, you've got your block there if you'd like that. Now take your time, hug outer hips into the midline. When you feel ready, you can lift the arms or the arms can come into heart center. Make sure you're still breathing. I can hear all of my students laughing when I say this, because sometimes that happens. We hold our breath and we don't even realize it. So you wanna feel that we're activating all these muscles that are gonna help build strength in the legs to protect the knee and build strength in and around the knee. Now draw the hands into the chest, lower the foot down, gently step it out. Take an inhale, lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, forward fold, hands to heart center. Maybe there's a bend into your knees to protect them. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold, step back to down dog. Remember, if you're skipping down dog, you'll be in the tabletop pose. Lower down to the knees, shift forward for knee down plank, lower to the chin, the chest, and the belly for prone. Inhale, low cobra, press the pubic bone into the mat, squeeze the elbows in, gently lift the head and the chest. Exhale to lower, inhale to tabletop, exhale to extended child's pose. Remember, if that hurts your knees, you're gonna lower down onto your back. I'm gonna demo what that looks like. Toes together to touch, knees out wide. This is a supine version of recline, excuse me, of extended child's pose. Those of you in child's pose, use your hands to press yourself up. Everybody meet me on the back to prepare for bridge pose. You're gonna use one block, no blanket under the head. Now we're gonna place the block so it's right in between the thighs. And you wanna give it a nice little squeeze here. Now, as you can feel the block in between the thighs, and as you give it that little squeeze, notice the muscles that are activating, right? and then let it relax, squeeze it again. Now we don't have to necessarily squeeze when we lift, but we don't want the block to fall out. We wanna be aware that the muscles are activated but not overactivated. Find the four corners of the feet in contact with the mat, let the toes spread out wide. Elbows are gonna bend, fingertips to the sky, palms to face each other. This is gonna help us quite a bit. When you inhale, lift the hips up, you can use the elbows to help activate the muscles of the legs as we lift up for our bridge. Find your breath. If this causes any pain in your knees, you're gonna to wanna to lower down. You can move your feet a little bit away from you and then you can try it again. 
Now lower the hips down nice and slowly. Be aware of what is working here. And then we'll lift the hips up again. And we're gonna turn this into a dynamic movement. Lower down on the exhale. Now you'll notice that when you press up, there's an activation of the inner thighs. These are called our, our inner groins. And the outer thighs are activated. When you lower down, the inner thighs release and the outer thighs release, and then you can soften. Let's take two more rounds. Now as you finish with this last round, lower down, remove the block, and we'll finish just like we started windshield wipers. Take the arms out to the sides, release the knees to one side, and then to the other side. Take one more round as we reset the spine. If you need a blanket under your head, grab onto a blanket, lengthen out through one leg, lengthen out through the other leg. Let the heels draw in towards each other, the feet away from one another. Take the arms out to the side, softly close the eyes. Notice and observe the muscles of the legs. Invite yourself to completely soften. Eyelids are softly closed. Jaw is gently released. Tongue can rest at the base of the mouth. Take a breath in and gently soften. Invite your body to be completely aware of your surroundings but more aware of the softness you've created on the inside. As you feel all the weight of the world gently released from the body and the mind, take these last few minutes to completely rest and soften as you relax and enjoy your Shavasana.
you want to stay longer. And you have the time to enjoy your Shavasana a little longer. I invite you to stay here and rest. If you're ready to get up, join me as you draw one knee into the chest and then the other. Roll your body over to your right hand side. Come into your fetal position. And place the left hand over the heart. And take a moment to thank yourself for coming to your practice. Gently press yourself up to come on up into a seated pose. Draw the hands together for Anjali Mudra in front of heart center. As you softly close the eyes, let the chin draw into the chest. Take a moment to honor yourself for taking this time for coming to your practice. The health of the knees is not something that can be taken care of right away. And one of the most important things when it comes to keeping the knees healthy is to know and to learn how to invite ourselves to be soft and how to relax and find an awareness of deep listening. The more we practice, the more comfortable our knees will become and the more stronger our knees will become. Thank you so very much for allowing me to guide you through this practice today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for practicing with me and for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in the next time I can see you. Thank you for subscribing and for liking and commenting. Please share with your friends and send me comments so that I can offer you things that you want to focus on. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.